Thank you so much for inviting me again. I'm very happy to be here. The first Muslim scholar in Chinese language was Wang Dayu, who published a real commentary on the first Atonal Two Teachings in 1642. In 40 chapters, this book offers an overview of basic Islamic notions about God, the universe, the human soul, the role of the prophets in salvation, and the practices that Muslims should perform. One of Wanda's major sources was a famous Persian work, Misal Ibad, Minal Mabda, El Al Ma'ad, The Past of the Servant from the Origin to the Return. This was written by Kubira Bishik Najmuddin Razim, who died in 1256. A few years after Wandayu published his book in 1670, another Chinese Muslim scholar translated his book into Chinese, and it became probably the single most influential text on Islam in Chinese over the next 200 years. Radin's book is marvelous because presentation of the whole range of Islamic teachings in Korean Persian, and it became a standard text for all sorts of Muslims throughout the Persianate world. It includes sophisticated discussions on creation, the human microcosm, and the various degrees of human perfection. But it avoids the philosophical and theological terminology that typifies the writings of Israel. The book shows no apparent awareness in Naradi's teachings, even though we know that Razi flourished at the time when these teachings were spreading rapidly. In short, if we accept the notion of oneness of being Bah and Wujud was one of the characteristic teachings of Naradi's school of thought, we should not expect to find references to it, either in Razi's Minsad Rebad or in the writings of Wandai. Historically, it seems fairly clear that the first Sufi teachers to claim that Ibn Arabi and his followers upheld the doctrine of Bahad Yuju was a great poet and scholar, Abdul Rahman Jami, who died in 1492. It is true that Ibn Arabi and his early followers, such as Sadrin Konami, often discussed both Bahad, oneness or unity, and Yuju being coexistent. <coughs> However, it was Ibn Taymiyyah who died in 1928, writing 100 years after Ibn Arabi, who began to criticize him and others for believing in Bahad Wujud. Before that time, none of Ibn Arabi's followers had employed this expression to characterize their teacher's position. Jeremy, however, was happy to claim that Ibn Arabi spoke for the oneness of being. And Jami's enormous influential writings were probably the single most important factor placing this doctrine at the center of Yunnan school of thought. When we look at the situation in China, we see that the second most important Muslim author translated in Chinese after Razi was in fact Jami. In the late 17th century, shortly after the period of Chinese translation of Musa Another Chinese scholar published a translation of Jeremy's commentary on Fahdori, Iraqi's Ramad. Iraqi wrote this classic poetical Persian prose after attending Sadrin Kunari's lectures on the philosophical of Yagdala. Jeremy called his commentary on the flashes Ashiatu Ramad, the rays of the flashes and he based it mainly on the teachings of Konabi and his students, such as Sadari Arkan. About 40 years after translation of the rays of the fascists into Chinese, another Chinese scholar, Yuchi, translated Jami's well-known novel, The Glimpse, which can be considered one of the best and most concise explanation of the doctrine of the oneness of being in the Persian language. Even, but even before he translated the Raya, Ryuichi had borrowed copiously from Jami in some of his other writings. In fact, it is in the early writings of Ryuichi that we can find <coughs> one of the clearest expressions of Ahtadu, Wujud in Chinese. 
Yuji is one of the two or three most influential Muslim authors in the Chinese language. He is most famous for what has been called the Tianfan Trilogy. Tianfan in Chinese means heavenly square, heavenly direction, and it was used to designate Mecca, Arabia, and the religion of Islam. The Tianfan Trilogy presents the Islamic religion in three volumes, published between 1704 and 1724. The title of each the volume begins with the word Tianfan, which you can translate as Islam. The three are called Nature and Principle in Islam, Rules and Prophecy properties in Islam, and the true record of the utmost sage of Islam. The first book focuses on Islamic theological teachings about God, the universe, and human beings. The second addresses the rituals and the practices that Muslims need to perform in order to bring themselves into conformity with heaven. The third depict the life of the prophets as the supreme sage, the, own, the one who perfectly embodied the teachings and practices of Islam. The first of these three books is called Tien Fan Shinu, which means nature and principle in Islam. The book talks about being and its oneness in a manner that is clearly drawn from the writings of Jami. It consists of six parts the first of which is called the root classic. Classic is a Chinese term for scripture and the Muslim commonly refer to the Quran as a classic. Here Yuji is using the word more loosely to refer to important Muslim books in Arabic and Persian. He explains in his introduction that the root classic is composed of a series of quotations from 16 found books. And in the text itself, he provides 86 marginal notes indicating the sources of each quote. The six books that he employs in the root classic include Rajiz Nisabevad and the two works by Jeremy already mentioned, Lalaye and the commentary on the Namat. The remaining three books are Maksadi Aksa, a well known person work by the 13th century Kuyoli Sheikh, as is Nasafi. And Mawa Gif Fi Kalam, a famous Arabic text on theology by Azuddin Iji, and Arabic Quran commentary on Ayyavi. In short, the six part of nature and principle Islamic consists of free translations of many passages drawn from these six books and arranged in five short chapters. The remaining five chapters of the book analyze the topics of the five chapters in detail with the help of diagrams. Altogether, Yuji offers 70 diagrams in an attempt to clarify basic Islamic teachings on Tawhid, the structure of microcosm, the nature of microcosm, and the path that leads to human perfection. The whole book is highly theoretical. The actual practices that accompany the theory explained in the second volume of the Tianfan Theory, not in this volume. One more point should be mentioned concerning Ryuji's language in explaining the Islamic teachings. I said that the title of the book translated as the nature and principle in Islam. In English, this does not tell us much, but in Chinese, Shindi, nature and the principle is used to designate Near Confucian philosophy and the metaphysics. Near Confucianists, which synthesized all the schools of Chinese thought, represented the dominant Far Eastern worldview from around the year 1000 down through the 19th century. In other words, by quoting his book, Nature and the Principle in Islam, Yuji announced that he was presenting the Islamic worldview in the commentary contemporary language of Chinese intellectuals. Also, he wrote primarily for fellow Muslims. His title announces that he is speaking the universal language of Chinese civilization, not the provin provincial language of a group of foreigners. Indeed, Duchi and the school of thought that he represented were called the Huilu, 
that is the Muslim Confucian. Let me now turn to the way in which Liu Qi introduces the discussion of the oneness of being. First, we need to recall that Jeremy's typical manner of presenting Wahdat al-Wujud was based on the notion of levels, especially as clarified by Gunabi and Farmani. Jeremy was not an original thinker, but was concerned rather to explain difficult metaphysical concept in relatively simple fashion. He can probably be considered the single most important popularizer of the epidemiologist school of thought in passionate world, not least because of his poetry. In some of his works, Jeremy speaks of the levels of being in terms of the five divine presences, a term that goes back to the teachings of Gunavi and his circle. In both Lavaye and the commentary on the Lama'at, he provides more than one depiction of the level of existence. He also talks about being in itself, that is, every very essence of God, using the term non identification la ta'ayo, which is Konami's coinage, and non delimitation itla, which was used by both Konami and Ibn Arabi. In our translation of Yuji's book, that is now in the process of being published, we have traced many of Ryuji's teachings back to their exact sources in Jami. Here I still simply run through the manner in which Ryuji set down the structure of the microcosm in terms of the ontological levels that flow forth from the non-delimited level of real being. Ryuji offers his, this scheme in the first chapter of the Root Classic and then he elaborates on it with 12 diagrams and a commentary in the second part of his book. Yuji sums up the levels of existence with a diagram that he calls the macrocosm following in the circle of creation and transformation. This is a diagram 0.6. This is a version of what Ibn Alayi and other call the circle of being, diatom wujud. It depicts what Muslim philosophers and many Sufis call the origin and the return. Notice that these two words are used in the title of Raji's book, the past of the servant from the origin to the return. So also, much of the terminology that Yuji uses in explaining this diagram derives from Ibn Arabi's teaching. The diagram itself represents the cosmological scheme explaining the meaning of the diagram. Individual Circles, however, would divert us from the basic point I want to make, 